Hi everyone, good afternoon from sunny Barcelona. I wanted to welcome everyone to Travel Tech 2021, the US and Canada edition. My name is Alex Gomez. I have here with me Bianca Porto Varga. I have Theo here with me as well. Hello. Nuno from Expedia is about to start. Thank you very much. I've seen that we have a very international um, attendance today. So ev hi everyone in the end of the world, in all corners of the world. So just to, because of the sake of time and because I know that you were waiting for us uh, with a lot of excitement, then I just want to give some words from Vinicius Geraldo, who is the CEO of Travel Tech. Regrettably, he's not being able to join, so I'm picking up from him. Um, first of all, to all ladies, and women at the call, happy International Women's Day for you. So hope you're having a blast on your day. The other thing is Travel Tech is an educational and really cutting edge series of events for the hospitality and the travel industry. You're gonna hear from um, some of the most innovative companies out there today um, on how they can help you with their products. And then also cover some very interesting things about the customer journey today, about what things you can do to really make your business thrive. So being that said, um, I wanted to also thank all of our annual sponsors like Asud, like Book Online Now, Expedia, Amelia, and I'm gonna give the full list at the end of this call. And you can also have it at traveltech.com, which is our website. And without much further ado, I wanted to say basically, let's start. And I'm gonna um, ask Bianca to uh, introduce herself. Hello everyone, thank you so much for waiting. Uh, we're glad to be here and I'm glad to represent women on this day, such a special day for us. I'm Bianca Porto Barga. I've been in hospitality for 17 years. Last year I was laid off, but I was very lucky to find a job with Ask Suite, a company that has been in business for four years and we are a specialized chatbot for hotels. We won best chatbots um, in industry by Hotel Tech Reports two years in a row. I don't know if you can see my pin here, but that's what it says. And I'm super excited to spend this morning with you. And I'm in LA and uh, you're probably gonna see the sun hit my face in a couple of seconds here. <laughs> Good, well, thank you very much, Bianca, for the introduction. <laughs> I'm gonna hand it over to Teo, Teo. Hello, uh, I'm uh, Theodore. Theo, uh, as my friends tell me, Theo Katsibras uh, from Book Online Now. Uh, we are a booking engine. Uh, we are located in uh, 70, uh, 47 countries at this point. We have over 3,000 hotels in our portfolio. Uh, about myself, I'm uh, in the tourism sector at around 20 years right now. Uh, the last 10 years, uh, I concentrate on uh, revenue management and how to find tools to increase direct sales. So. I think uh, that this is a very nice opportunity through the travel, travel tech around the globe uh, to spread the new, let's say, features and the digitalization of uh, the online booking. So this is from me. Good. Thank you very much, Theo. And I'm privileged to say that I see Nuna has joined the call. So Nuna from Expedia, welcome. Uh, brief introduction from your side. Hi, right, guys. Uh, sorry for the technical problems. Hello, everyone. I'm Nuno. I'm director of market management at Expedia Group. And as you know, it's one of the largest full service travel platforms. And in a few words, our mission is to help millions of travelers to easily plan and book travel with the power of technology. So we try to build connections by helping our travelers and our partners find the right pathway through millions of possibilities. And to question of time, Maybe I was a little bit shorter, but better to go right. That's, that's perfectly fine. Good things come in small packages, right, Nuno? So that's that's a good thing with, with your introduction. But let's just say that uh, we are not able to see you just in case you want to review your camera. Um, I think that the audience will be, oh, there we see you. Now? See, yeah, perfectly fine. So that is, that is a sight. And I think the guys will all be interested in, in in seeing you directly, right? So I think that we don't have Bianca right now, but I think that in, in the sake, for the sake of time, I think we can move on with, with, the, with the questions. So I'm just gonna jump on to Theo directly, really. So Theo, well, we'll start with you. And then I think that everyone is interesting in how 
online reservations currently and after COVID will have changed basically. And what did you see in terms of booking on uh, book online portfolio? How it has it behaved? What are the significant learnings that you've got in the last few months? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, first of all, I would like to highlight that I see a high increase of direct booking. So uh, I see maybe also Nuno will tell us after he's talking about OTA like Expedia, that uh, I see a rising number, increasing number of direct reservations from uh, the clients. So because they had some problems uh, last year with cancellation uh, due, uh, let's say, the new things, the new trends that uh, COVID brought. So they had problems uh, with some OTAs, maybe also with the uh, uh, direct reservations. So I see they trust more the brand of the hotel. So actually they trust the booking engine and they trust the official website. Uh, however, uh, you know that uh, the, this uh, age of COVID uh, has changed many things regarding revenue management and how the pricing uh, strategy of the hotel uh, can be handled. So actually, uh, hotels cannot uh, rely anymore on, cross, in, on historical trends they get from PMSs or uh, from all the reservations in the past, uh, because things are changing week by week, not saying day by day. So actually, they must be ready uh, to have uh, not only uh, the personnel, the revenue managers, but also uh, the online tools in order to understand all the online trends uh, that exist at this point uh, regarding reservations, not only the direct, which is the booking engine, but also what the OTAs are offering as new tools in the new trends uh, the clients uh, follow at uh, this moment. So uh, the next thing actually uh, what we see is that uh, the booking window uh, has actually changed, so it's shrinking. Uh, so we see last minute bookings. Uh, this is logical because uh, actually uh, day by day you don't know which markets are opening. Uh, you don't know which are, let's say, uh, the restrictions that are caused due to COVID. So uh, they don't trust to, to book, let's say, an advanced uh, 90 days as they did in the past. I'm located in Greece. So actually at this time, uh, we did have last bookings only for May, not for uh, August or September, which were, let's say, July, August, which were the high season. So actually, we had reservations in the past uh, coming from November, December for the summer season. So this has changed. And this is a great challenge also for the hotels and the revenue managers to understand the last minute trends and how through the uh, booking engine and the features the booking engine offers, they can actually uh, engage the client to make the booking. Now, uh, regarding direct bookings, uh, you can understand that uh, the website is uh, a way of advertisement. However, the thing that we are insisting to our clients that use the booking engine is to have more and more channels included in the channel manager, like OTAs, like uh, not only the big elephants, as we call it, like uh, booking and Expedia, but they need mm -hmm. to adapt also channels uh, that are in different markets from the historical, let's say, markets that they were uh, uh, having incoming uh, travelers. So in okay. this way, maybe uh, they need also to understand uh, that uh, through uh, the channel mix, as we call it, they can also uh, have the opportunity to get more and more uh, direct from their official website. Uh, another thing is that they need to stop thinking about the price all the time. So it's logical, again, that uh, the clients uh, mm -hmm. expect to find through the booking engine the best available price, the best available rate with more and more discounts. However, the th I think I had an interruption, or am I? Yeah. Was it, yeah. Okay. Was it only to? Yeah. Okay. No worries. Hey, oh, no, no. Just sorry for okay. that. There was a problem no worries, with the broadcast, no. so I, I no recovered problem. it for you. So you can continue. Okay. Your no worries. So uh, another thing uh, I'm proposing actually to our uh, clients is not to play only with discounts to the rates, but actually uh, have add values. Uh, experiences added to the rate plans that they book uh, directly from uh, the booking engine. So uh, the client wants to have an experience. After the COVID, we are all tired uh, because of lockdown. So actually, whenever we are thinking about vacations, we would like to uh, to have uh, uh, actually an experience 
through the official website of the hotel mm -hmm. and feel that the hotel is offering something different. And uh, the last but not least, in fact, is that uh, the hotel needs to have a new approach generally in marketing and sales and pricing strategy. So they need to think that they have a new hotel opening. Uh, so all the things, not only the online segment, which is sales, marketing of online prices or the marketing or the digital marketing that they need to make, but also mm -hmm. how they position the hotel in the destination they are uh, located in. They need to, uh, to make cooperations with companies that are uh, located in their destination and find products that they can sell directly from the booking engine. Okay. Thank you for that, Theo. I think it's very valuable to now take a little bit of opinion from uh, Nuno and Bianca on that, really. So they work directly with hotels. Nuno, you on the distribution side. So have you seen the same thing from the OTA point of view or have you seen things differently? What is your take on that? Bianca, do you want to go first? No, you can go first, please. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, a, few, a few things. Uh, thank you for that. A, a, th a, few, a few things that I, I, I see exactly the same is regarding the booking window, right? When we look into the to the way that has been shifting, it was it used to be a month and a half, almost two months for some destinations, some other like resorts. It was larger periods, and now what we see is more last minute. So the zero to twenty one days just increased dramatically, and two things here that made that possible was, first of all, that the customers start start booking more on the uh, and using the car, right, than the flight. And that is one of the reasons why. And the second is that every single thing has been changing week after week, month after month. So the reservations that we see or the searches usually are for this weekend that is coming or for the weekend after. What that it makes, it makes that the, the travelers or the shoppers in this case, they are looking to the best deal and to try to, to see if they can travel there on the four or five hour drive uh, destination if possible. So yes, that the booking window was one of the things that changed, some other, some other things as well, but I will, I will leave now to, uh, to be able to, with her piece. Yes, we see the, go ahead, no. Theo. Okay. Um, I think we see the same through the chatbot. Um, I think the domestic travel is also a trend that we'll continue to see uh, because people got a taste of it and they maybe found places that they would otherwise not be interested because it's too close. Uh, so it's definitely a, a segment that hotels should think about moving forward because I think it's going to remain for a while. People are still very insecure about traveling, and I think traveling closer to their home makes them feel better um, about taking taking the trip. Um, so yeah, we noticed the same, and it's definitely a trend that we see with our hotels. Good. Well, that's that's been super insightful, and I think it has to do a lot with how things are going to be in the new normality, right? So um, that being said, Nuno, now to you. What are the trends? on top of what you've already discussed that you have been seeing that have changed in online travel booking. Are there any things that we should be particularly aware of going forward? We cannot hear you, Nuno, just in case you are muted. Right about now? Yep, that's perfect. Thank you. So lots of things change and, and we have been seeing a substantial shift in booking behavior. Uh, for obvious reasons, as I said, people are flying less uh, and driving more, and, and that makes that every single thing change about the kind of uh, of, of accommodation and or the type of accommodation and and the people that you are traveling with, for example, right? The average booking window, as as Theo said, shrunk dramatically, and when we look into that, some of other things across that have been also being being uh, shifting. So if we look into, for example, to the domestic demand, right? Lots of us, we, we heard about that domestic was increasing. And indeed, it continued to see some searches uh, on the domestic outpacing the international searches. It's very clear that that situation. However, if we look into November, when the vaccine news came out, right, we all of us were very happy. And precisely during the same week and the weeks after, we saw that international demand was also increasing. 
So we, we saw a, a very positive sign here. And then it, one of the things that didn't change for those two, for those two components, domestic or international, was the flexibility, right? This is a critical thing. While in the past, pre-pandemic, pre, pre we saw that we have lots of restrictions, lots of situations regarding, regarding the policies at the hotel. But now what we see is eight out of 10 travelers, for example, they would be more likely to choose a property with a flexible cancellation policy, which why we, for example, in Expedia Group, we made 70% of those rate plans refundable. So these kind of situations have been evolving. Uh, and also we saw, as I said before, the type of accommodation. So it's changed, it changed. Uh, we, we used to have very popular, the hotels, the resorts in the past, right? Before pandemic, and now we see apartments, villas, condos, uh, chalets, castles, uh, cottages. And one of the reasons why is not because the product just suffered this or that, it's because that people are looking for a different situation, right? more search wide open spaces and, and when it, when you look into those ski towns uh, outdoor recreation areas uh, golf towns the beaches national parks they became even more popular and you can see that online and just to finalize one thing that didn't change was the dreaming for travel and i really want to say this right because no matter what we have we have been seeing in the number in the in the trends in the numbers and so on we can see that during the pandemic, at the beginning, people were coming to our pages just to cancel reservations and check if their, the cancellation was already on, right? And then we start seeing that people straight away, during Q2, if I remember very well, they were looking for travel. They were not booking as much as we would like, but they were looking for travel. And during summertime, we just saw that booking searches and, and, and purchases were almost that. So they reduced the gap and we have been very, very happy to say that. Well, that, that's awesome news. And I, I think I'm gonna open it up for discussion with Bianca and Theo, but I think that travel is fundamentally human, right? So you would still have people looking for it because they needed to, I don't know, clear their heads or dream or just get out of, to say lockdown at least. But now the good thing is that those become actual bookings, right? So I think that's the silver lining of what you said, right, Nuno? Um, I don't know, Bianca, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's interesting. We talked to some hotels um, now and they say, well, I don't know if I need a chatbot at the moment because my hotel is closed and uh, there's really nobody you know, looking for reservations and they're so wrong. As Nuno is saying, maybe the hotel is not open for stays right now, but people are still shopping your hotel for stays later. In January, we saw a record number of interactions on the chatbot and some were for stays you know, coming up, but some were for vacation um, in the summer, because as, as we were saying, people are still dreaming, people are still planning. And I just feel that hotels uh, still didn't get it that when it comes back, it's gonna come back really quick. And it's not going to be, hey, next month, everything is going to come back. People are gonna start traveling again. Once people feel safe and there are more uh, countries, you know, getting the vaccines out, I think it's gonna happen very quickly. So hotels should be prepared now, even if your hotel is not open currently, we need to prepare for when things come back because, because people are still dreaming. I am, I can speak for myself. Uh, I'm planning vacations that I don't even know I can make happen, you know, by the end of the year, but uh, but it's definitely happening. Oh, but you're optimistic that way. And I think we're all yes. are, right? Uh, yep. I think it's it's very, it's very, very true to think that we're gonna, we're gonna see a, a kind of a very big rebound, let's just say, because the effect of lockdown on people actually makes it that whenever you're let go, let's just say start running, right? And, and people will, like, will go running anywhere they can, right? So a, very, a, very exactly. great, a great example is UK. Uh, last week, uh, the Prime Minister of uh, UK uh, announced that they will allow, let's say, UK residents to, to travel. So actually, again, about Europe, I'm talking, uh, we've seen uh, at that 24-hour or 48-hour uh, uh, time slot, that uh, a reservation have increased directly because of an announcement without having the security again that everything will be normal. Just with an announcement that they will allow after two months uh, the flights 
and uh, of uh, the residents of UK. So you can see that this changes every moment. Hopefully, not for other stuff, but hopefully we have a lot of UKs in the world, right? Happening all at once. So yep. people are <laughs> that's that's, right that's why I'm here. Right? So not for other stuff, but for travel for sure, right? So, uh, so that's that's a very good point. Nuno, you were going to say something, sorry. Yeah, ju just to complete what uh, uh, Theo said. If you look, for example, to Miami, where I'm based, uh, the reports say that in January, the occupancy was about 54.5% occupancy. It's a good number. Yeah. It's a good number. So yeah. it okay. depends on lots of things. We know it can vary from uh, destination to destination, country to country, but we understand that. And precisely here, what we have been seeing is social media really voicing that people have been visiting more Florida. And for that reason, we can understand we can understand that if there there is the possibility, right? If there is the hope, people will continue traveling for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to thank you for your word, right? So we're going to say this is Nuno, and Nuno is making it true. So hopefully we see that happening soon, right? Uh, just just for the audience there, again, I want to reiterate that we are super apologetic about the technical issues that we've had so far. You can follow us on the YouTube channel. That broadcasting is working well. And for the other people that are posting questions, I will address them at the end of today's Q&A that we have with the uh, the three rock stars that we have currently on the broadcast. Uh, I see Levi asking something. I see Alex asking something. I see um, Ruth as well. So bear with me. I'll, I'll pick them up. I'll put them on the parking lot right now, and I'll pick them up at the end of the session. Right. So um, I think, Bianca, I, I wanted to ask you something. So you've been selected hotel chatbot number one in the world. So congratulations. You're assisting more than 1 million travelers currently. So basically, what is it that you're hearing? What are the behaviors that you're getting through your technology um, from the travelers itself? What are, what are they looking for? Uh, so we definitely saw an increase in traffic to the hotel's websites, which is good news. We've been trying to make it happen for years, and it finally did. Unfortunately, not because of the best reason, uh, but I just feel that um, travelers now have a lot more questions when they're visiting a hotel, and there is no better place to find that information than on the hotel's website. So people are looking for um, not only information about the hotel, like is the restaurant open, do you have capacity at the pool, what are you doing to make me feel safer while I'm on property? Do you have housekeeping? But also guests are looking for uh, local information. Are the rest uh, the restaurants open in LA? Does it? Uh, do you have a curfew in town? Things of that nature. Um, because um, obviously, for the obvious reasons, last year hotels don't have the same level of staffing as before. I really hope it's not a trend that will continue after vaccines are out. But I do see hotels reducing the number of staff. Even us, sometimes we're trying to talk to a client and it's hard to get a hold of them on the phone. So we feel bad for guests that are trying to call properties and get information. Um, it's just really harder now to, to get in touch with hotels. Um, but with that, we also saw an increase in direct bookings because people mm -hmm. are on the website. They're already looking for information there. If they find the right information, uh, then they go to the booking engine and they make the booking directly. So that's a positive trend that we're seeing too um, with some of, of our hotels. And one thing that I wanted to to say here is that I see a lot of properties making it easier for travelers to, to visit their destinations. They even go to the extent of offering COVID tests on property for, you know, from Mexico, from Mexico to the US, you need to have a negative COVID test to re-enter the country. So some hotels in Mexico have a test on site that uh, tourists can take to come back home. So I think it's, uh, if your hotel has the, you know, the resources to make it easier for guests uh, to make their travel, you know, more pleasant and there are less steps uh, to get to your property, I would do that. And if you can't, make sure that you're communicating right, that you're putting everything on your website, all the information possible on your social media, um, so people feel safe when they're visiting you. That's, that's very interesting, right, Bianca? Because I think the only way to really produce rich content and really communicate it well and have people get more um, accustomed and reassured about traveling is, is through technology, right? Because if not, then you cannot convey that message. You cannot reassure the traveler that they can still do it. Either it's, it's on an OTA, on a platform, or it's really on the hotel's website, 
I think that's the that's a key challenge there, and more so when, as you said, you're understaffed, right? So you you've taken a decision whether you like it or not um, to reduce your structure, right? So yeah. I think we'll see very interesting trends and, and things happening on that side of the business and the travel industry. To cope yeah. With for sure. And I see hotels doing a really interesting job with social media, uh, posting pictures about the way that they're cleaning their property or the procedures that they have in place. And I love that. For me as a traveler, I appreciate when people are going the extra mile to make sure that we are healthy while staying at the hotel. So I think people are getting creative and we are taking this uh, horrible tragedy into an opportunity for us to, to come back better um, as an industry. So I, I do appreciate when hotels do that. Good. And then now to close this first round of questions, I think that I, I want to post an interesting challenge to the three of you, right? So we're, uh -oh. we're talking about trends, we're talking about technology, we're talking about the traveler itself. Now that we start seeing this up, let's just say uplift or this upward trend for travel in the upcoming months, then why do you think travelers will buy a specific product? What are the things that will make a travel buy from you specifically? And I think we can start with Bianca because it's women's oh. day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way this is turning. Um, so can you repeat your question, Alejandro? I want to make sure I understood the it correctly. Is we have travelers today in a post-COVID era, right? So they're gonna they're gonna start buying products, but they will do so for spe for specific reasons, right? So there's, for example, there's there's this report by McKenzie saying that people will be prone to look for more value for money rather than total price, and they're looking at those trends in terms of what is the act what is the hotel actually doing through the hotel and through technology to give me reasons to buy their product, right? So what do you think will be those reasons? What would you, if you were a travel, because you said you're, you're planning on traveling yourself, what, were, what are you going to look for in a post-COVID era in a product? Great. So that's how I gain more time to think about my answer. So did you like that? You know, like, can you repeat the question? <laughs> um, as a traveler, I think I want to make sure that the hotel um, is, has the right things in place for me to feel safe. Um, and also that they're... Um, taking the time to recognize me as a guest. I think as humans, um, we, we love to travel. Uh, we are in the travel space. Probably a lot of people that are watching, they love to travel themselves. And I think um, at the end of the day, there's need to be an understanding that we are all doing our best at the hotel as a traveler. We're all doing our best if we can, you know, with what we have uh, throughout the situation, meaning that you're going to have high expectations as a client but also the team that's on property, maybe they were laid off for all 2020. Maybe they were working through 2020, which honestly, sometimes it's even worse because they were doing so much. So I think there is going to be a little bit of a clash, you know, of demand expectations with the resources that the hotels have in hands. Um, mm -hmm. So for me as a traveler, I am looking for um, communication. I want to make sure that the hotel is communicating with me correctly. I want to know if I'm going to your hotel and the pool is closed. I want to know ahead of time that the pool is closed. It's fine. Maybe I'll still stay at your hotel with the pool closed, but I want to know in advance. So I think, um, you know, an understanding of both parts that maybe things are not the way they were before. Um, but as long as you tell me, you know, before I come to your hotel and spend all my money and the pool is a big deal for me, I want to know that in advance. And again, once I'm there, I want to know that you are taking the steps to make sure that things are as safe as possible. Again, taking into consideration that we are only humans and there is so much we can do. Uh, but I think that would be my take on, on travel post-COVID. Cool. Thanks. Super enlightening. Guys, anyone wants to add anything on top of that? I think... Jack, I should... I think I think Bianca said almost everything. But the thing I would like to highlight is that when I go to the hotel, uh, I don't want to think about the COVID situation. So actually, I need to have, let's say, a kind of guarantee when I make the booking and uh, all the things that Bianca told us that 
uh, there is a pool, there might be some limitation about the pool. There might be some limitation about the uh, free space areas. So in this case, when I have this information, when I get there, I don't want to think about this thing anymore. I want to go there and have, as I told you in the beginning and your first question, I want to have an experience. And maybe this experience is not only within the hotel, but generally at the destination I'm going. So I feel that I will not stay at the hotel too much. I will go outside. I will go to the beach. I will go outside uh, to the restaurant. So it's not only about the information you give about the hotel, but also about the area the hotel is located. If there are restaurants that are doing the same as the hotel does, security about COVID, uh, all the measures. So everything is about the destination, in my opinion, first of all. And secondly, is how this uh, is being approached and delivered by the hotel as a product. Okay, thanks. Okay. No? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Well. So I, I, I couldn't agree more with, with, with Bianca and Thiel, right? It, it's, about, it's about all of us. It's not just about someone that is looking over there to the work that we do. We try to help. And one of the things that Expedia did was a, a, a study uh, recently is in order to listen travelers and partners. And lots of the things that both are saying resonates exactly with the study, right? The customer or shoppers, they want trusted accommodation. Right. And trusted accommodation is about that. Right. I was taking a few notes here. It's about flexibility. Right. They, uh, we want now an airline just just remove all those fees and hotels should do the same. Right. We don't want to go and say we don't want to book and say, hey, what what if it happens this or that. So the ones that the consumers will start looking into and probably buying will be the ones that have better flexible policies. Also, I took note of the health and hygiene situations. Bianca said it, right? You, you want to feel, you want to book and do not think about it. It's already bad enough for us to be thinking, oh, will the hotel have the cleaning thing? Will we have the, the cleanless uh, check-in um, or the contactless check-in? Everything will be, everyone will have a mask or not, right? What will happen if I go in a corridor and I see someone with a mask? So all the, without a mask, all those kind of things, for example, I really recommend everyone to go into the, to, to, in this case, to the Expedia Partner Central. I have to say at least, <laughs> at least, but update the information, check if it is there, right? Check if it, it makes sense for them as a consumers, and then it will make sense for everyone, right? Call someone, call some friends, try to understand if you have some doubts, but try to bring all of that information out. Something else about the booking window. They'll start with that before. Hey, be careful. If everyone is going on last minute um, and people start looking to this weekend, the next weekend or three weekends away, don't don't break that, right? Don't, don't, make, don't make that be an impossible thing. Try to make it more possible than the content. So many things. A picture with, I don't know, the pool, with the seating, sun lounges, you know, the uh, space it enough with the, with the, with the physical distancing, uh, dining areas outside, um, a check-in a check in with someone uh, with a mask and the, and the receptionist also with a mask will give some trusted accommodation feeling to the shoppers and that will also give a prioritization on, on, the, on the bucket list. And... Last but not the least, and I have to say this, being inclusive, right? Challenge yourself, check if your property really is for everyone. And that's exactly what we do in this life, right? We try to, to, to bridge everyone, we try to build these connections, but what about if your property is not, is not for everyone? You will just reduce and you are not doing a good, a good, a good favor to the travel industry. So. Some of your things that I just took note while my my counterparts were here talking. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, uh, Nuno. And I and I think what what I take out of hearing you all out is first of all what I see and, and being before at hotels and, and now thinking what hotels are going to do is that the experience, the the imagineering of of a, of a hotel or a trip. Let's let's put it a trip because it includes a lot of things, right? In, 
starts way, way earlier than before, right? You have to communicate a lot of senses and a lot of things to a traveler than what you did before, right? Before mm -hmm. you might have just posted a, a picture and you just shown your pool and then the guest would say, well, that's fine with me and I would arrive and discover it for myself. But now you have to convey so many things just so that the traveler is feeling safe and really wants to go to your, to your property. That I, I cannot see that happening without technology, right? So you work technology and you work hotels. And with if we don't start thinking maybe of the cyborg concept, like still having humans, but enabled through technology to do that for the travelers, then it will be impossible. Like you're going to lose the traffic. You're not going to get people, basically. Right. Correct. Uh, it's not one thing or the other. You, you need both to create something cohesive. So, yeah, we I think give it, credit. we can give the credit to hoteliers, though, that they have understood a little bit that technology will help them. So I see uh, the hoteliers uh, are trying to 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 build technology, to take a technology, adapt technology into uh, online sales and not only. So actually, we need to give a credit that maybe COVID has brought hoteliers uh, closer to technology. So I see that uh, also technology companies are uh, very close to each other right now. Uh, there are integrations that didn't happen in the past. So I see the booking engine is connected not only to channel manager right now, but also to revenue tools, also to PMS. So actually all this thing uh, brings a new reality to us, not only to the client itself, the hotelier itself, but also to the professionals of, uh, of the field. Well, let's just say, Theo, that, that what we can say in a nutshell is that not everything with COVID was bad, right? So there are some green offshoots of COVID, right? So it brought the ecosystem together. We see the we saw the frailty, the frailty of the travel industry, and now more than ever, if we don't all work together, then we are we have a problem, right? So I think that's that's a good takeaway or a silver lining from what happened. Now you see more cooperation, more collaboration more tech integration, more acceptance to change, right? Which I think are all good things, right? Yeah, I think as an industry, we are always a little bit late on adopting new technology because we are 24 seven business. So it's not that you can say, oh, this month I'm gonna stop everything to you know, get a new PMS. It just doesn't happen that way. Uh, but I, th I think, yeah, COVID forced us to look into things a different way. And it's not to fire all your front desk staff, but it's to really enable them to do their job properly and not having to you know, insert keys on the machine and not even look at their customer while they're doing that because they don't have time. Um, I think we just made our staff too busy with day-to-day -day operations and we, we forgot what hospitality means, what, what it is to welcome someone to your hotel. And I think technology enables us to do that. It's just that hotels need to take time, a little bit of effort uh, to look into it. I complete. I couldn't agree more, right? And we're not going to name any, any key card companies here just in case. So no, I'm sorry. Fine. <laughs> but, uh, let me Jump to round two of questions if you prepare for it, because we are talking about technology and, and how hoteliers, let's give credit, as Theo said, are adopting technology. So Theo, let, let me start with you. So now that hoteliers are adopting new technology, right, to enhance their operations, to make it better for them to sell, what do you think are the features or the advanced features that um, a hotelier should have on their booking engine? to convert more, to get more sales, to make it more efficient. Okay. Uh, so I think I concentrate a lot the last years, not only the COVID, is the loyalty scheme. So uh, the uh, hotels uh, due to COVID need to rely on the clients they had in the past, the loyal clients, because those clients have already experienced the, the hotel, the good days before COVID. So they're keen of getting back to the hotel, uh, even after COVID, because they trust the hotel, they trust the brand, they trust all the facilities and amenities. So I think uh, the the thing with the booking engine is to uh, have an, uh, let's say an adapted uh, loyalty scheme, which will gi uh, give the opportunity to the hotelier uh, to, to show uh, rate plans, discounts, or even uh, let's say uh, package deals, as we call it in Book Online now, uh, combined uh, rate, accommodation rates, B2B, flexible, non-refundable, half-board, anything, combined with add values at the stay. 
So this way, uh, they will engage more with the clients and even try uh, things. Newsletter maybe is, let's say, old fashioned. But on yeah. the other hand, uh, if you have, let's say, the historical data of your, uh, of your of your clients and emails of your clients, by having a good uh, booking engine which can provide also promo codes, giving access to repeated clients with promo codes to the booking engine, which I will say something about the OTAs now, hide some, let's say, products, some rate plans or packages from the OTA side give it only exclusively through the booking engine and the official website, maybe a solution, not only uh, get advantage and uh, decrease the commission you pay to uh, the, the OTAs, but also uh, engage the client. So I feel that uh, loyalty machines and making different, uh, having the opportunity to make different uh, uh, products for your clients through the official website may be the key and uh, get more trust from uh, the visitors of your official website. Good, that's us. Awesome. So why Nuno, then let me ask you about what just Theo just said. I would love your opinion on that one. <laughs> we, we, we are not kids, right? We, we have been in this industry for a long time. Yep. One of the things that we know is that consumers, shoppers, travelers, they will go to our pages, they will find us several times, but they also go directly to some of the properties. So that's not, that's not something that we are not aware. We understand that, of course, the conversations also between the hotels and ourselves is sometimes is how can I increase more the online booking process? And to increase that, they need also some partners aside with our marketing, with our strength, with our insightful data, right, that we have. And also that we provide, for example, like marketing sites. When when the hotel says, hey, I want to do something on, our, on my page, but I don't know exactly how the market is facing, what is going on, usually we receive that call. Happy that we received that call, right? Mm -hmm. we received that call because we have all that data to provide to them about when the consumers are looking for travel, where they are coming from, what is the the, the average daily rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of that information is a good one. It will be used for other purposes. We understand that, uh, but in the majority, we can see we can see that the relationship is still very very good. And what we also believe is that with the new features that we have on Expedia Partner Central, it will might help Theo and his and his his clients, but will also of help a lot our travelers uh, that go into our page and convert direct. And I was gonna say, Nuno, I wanted to highlight that because I, I've seen the Partner Central myself, and I know that there's a lot of actionable data for hotels to use and really apply it in a, in a myriad of ways, right? And I think it, this also speaks to what we said before about enhancing collaboration, enhancing partnerships, and really it's a big market out there, right? So there's opportunity for everyone uh, to give it, for me, which, which is the most important thing is giving an awesome experience, right? It doesn't matter how, it's just keeping the traveler happy and making it an experience, right? And, and maybe recovering a little bit of what Bianca said before, it's, it's about the hospitality. It's like, let's not just lose sight of that word. So what, one of the things that we do, the four of us, right, uh, is helping people to get together, right? Someone goes from point A to point B and will meet other people. So how can we help those kind of things? It to happen is exactly with technology nowadays. And if we look, let's look a little bit out of the travel industry. If we look to during the pandemic, all the online uh, uh, places, uh, companies where, where you buy some goods and so on, they all went up with their, with their web sales, right? So we can understand, for example, and we see due to that study that we did, that 24% more are booking on OTAs. So that means that we have been doing a good job, all of us, right, to, pr to provide that information on a better way that Bianca was saying, to have, to have all the, all the, all the, um, the flexibility that, and the, on the booking window that Theo was, was raising at the beginning. And those kind of things that will make that travel will, will outpace faster than what we believe. So With actually what, Nuno, you are saying also that uh, live data and generally uh, data uh, is the key for the hoteliers. So actually, uh, OTAs like Expedia are not competing any booking engine of the hotel. It's the brand awareness of the hotel. 
they know the destination. Uh, it's so actually this is why I told you in the beginning I I, I insist on, on on having a channel mix, more and more channels uh, added in order to have a brand awareness. But actually, what also all the technology of the booking engine, any booking engine does, it follows also the trends of Expedia or booking or any other big OTA because you are the ones who have the biggest data. Uh, yeah. And you know the trends actually uh, quicker than us. So actually what we do is in some points, uh, we try to follow also your kind of, let's say, implementations in terms of the trends that the clients uh, are following. And we implement also some features to, to adapt the same kind of, uh, let's say, visitors. Very correct. Good. Good. So, so let me take it from here and say, Theo really focused on loyalty schemes and how to get recurring visitors into your hotels, right? But Nuno, I think that if asking you, what hotels can do to get that first client post vaccination, post COVID, because it, you, you cannot only rely on your loyalty base, right? So you need more new customers, I would I would say. So what's your, what's your take on that? How can they, what can they do to actually get that customer to their property post vaccination? Oh, I think I think that we already said a lot, and I will repeat some of the things. Glad that I took notes on on the flexibility. Right? It will be it will be fundamental. Uh, mm -hmm. Young generations, for example, they are working from whatever place they want in the world. Some of them, and also, for example, just a, a good a good data here for Theo. Uh, Ninety percent of the travelers, they are easily persuaded to extend their booking right now right so Very these kind of situations these kind of situations because there is flexibility on our lives at certain point to certain people of course always with some with some careful words here but that can happen and if that can happen it means that if the airline the transportation in this case the airlines are renting the car the friends we can go there and we can stay another night another day and just having both the leisure and the business. On the health and hygiene, please, 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 please. Uh, Expedia at the beginning of the of the pandemic, we brought a huge checklist to, to, to go through it, check it again, see if whatever is in your country, in your destination is according to what you have now on our page, because the consumer will not like to see one thing and then have a different thing. Bianca said it for herself as a consumer. I will say it myself as well. Uh, the booking window would talk about and the content, for example, they point something that I liked very much, which is I'm going to that destination. I'm going to that property. What is the point of interest around? What should, what should I do when I go there, right? I, I, I'm just visiting a destination that probably was a destination that I used to visit with my parents uh, when I was uh, um, a teenager, which was like a few years ago. And... And when we, when we were going there, it was totally different. So what's going on now, right? What about my kids? Am I taking my kids there to that same destination that I used to visit? What else is there, right? And that can make the, the, the difference. And then, of course, on a, few, on a few tactical moves, I would say that package is very important. The, the, the transportation plus, plus the accommodation is always a great thing to do because it will give a huge value to the shoppers and mobile. I want to talk just a little bit about mobile because it increased a lot. Uh, we could see, that, as I said, hot wire, 80% was prior to arrival of the bookings. But if you look into some brands in certain destinations, it increased from 20 to 30% of the bookings to 50 to 60% of the booking. So we just double, almost triple in some cases. And mm -hmm. in, some, in some days that we can see that the population feel more confident to travel online just gives more than 50% of our traffic nowadays. So this is very, very important that every single one that have a property needs to have a strategy on mobile, right? And my last one, I will be very honest on this, on, on this one, is, is, about, is about talk to our market manager. Okay, I, I should not be, you know, forcing here something, but it's about people. This is a business that we care about people. This is people with people, and we have an amazing team. And in order, for example, for Gio, as you were saying, we need to bring that big data in order to understand what to do. 
no one better to give that information than than, than our team. So just have a chat with, with with our with our team because they will be willing to provide all, all of those marketing sites. Good. Yeah, if I may add, it's interesting on the mobile uh, front. It's been years we've been talking about mobile. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I think it's happening right now. I think we the increase that we saw in transactions being done through mobile, just because it's, uh, you know, obviously everything is becoming better. Uh, but also we see at Ask Suite that 75% of the interactions that guests have with the with the chatbot are done through mobile because it's still um, you know kind of a, a different experience when you have just a device on your hand so it's harder to find information so people literally just want to ask a question and be you know find the 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 answer super quick so I I really think that you have a great point there no no about the mobile people should be paying more attention if they are not. Um, yet, because it's, uh, I think we're, we've been waiting for it to happen, and I think COVID also kind of accelerated that. I have a funny uh, example for mobiles uh, through the booking engine. So actually, it's a woman's day today. So I see that lots of women are, uh, let's say, checking about the destination or the hotel through mobiles, but the conversion in the booking engine happens through desktop from men. I don't know why this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so keep in mind, okay, so it depends on the, uh, some, okay, uh, the mobile, uh, of course, is increasing, okay, so uh, this is why also the booking engine should have also uh, a dedicated, let's say, version only for mobile devices as all the channels uh, do. Uh, however, it depends also uh, if it's, let's say, a destination, a city destination, it's a, a resort. So usually, yes, all the, let's say, the check of the destination, uh, checking information, checking uh, where the hotel is located, whatever is done uh, through mobile devices because we're with friends outside. We want to check through a mobile uh, all the information. However, uh, don't forget about desktop. I feel still that desktop is uh, the main conversion point of the actual reservations. Uh, mobile is increasing, but still there are, let's say, age uh, categories that still use the desktop and they are trusting, uh, let's say, the PC or uh, the laptop to make a reservation directly. Well, oh, I, I completely agree. Alejandro, if you just allow. When I said that more than 50% of the traffic is coming from mobile, it doesn't mean that that 50% will always book mobile, right? And I totally agree. The desktop is still very important. And some destinations, we we need a bigger screen and some other destinations, you know, we don't need that, 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 that bigger one. So it happened to me, I can confess. One last thing that I would like to the table is reviews, right? We, we still have this 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 component that is very that is essential right for someone to say i want to stay here or not even when we are booking something on another on another on another industry right we're looking to the reviews and this is one of the main factors for for travelers to opt for that property instead of the other one so here is my recommendation on that as well good and, and, and nuno just let me tie one and two together because I think that for older people like me, we still need that stuff. <laughs> That's that one issue for sure. The other, the other one is that it all comes down when you actually talked before about having a strategy, right? Having a channel mix strategy, right? So not everyone wants the same experience, right? So we are going into this age of hyper personalization and really finding a new customer journey. So I think th those are all valid points to really have a new way of booking and experiencing travel after COVID, right? I think COVID is, is that tipping point into doing things differently. Um, so in, in that sense, let me, let me just push this out to Bianca and say, what do you see hotels doing uh, to adapt their business and cater to new guest demands? What, what do you think are those demands, Bianca, actually? We've covered some, but maybe there are other things we haven't discussed yet. Yeah, a couple of interesting things that I've seen hotels do. Uh, for example, we have a group of hotels in Brazil. They're heavily corporate event hotels, which are probably the ones that are suffering the most these days because obviously nothing is happening in that world. Uh, but they came out with a really out of the box kind of package for events. Uh, so they have three types of events. I remember two of them. One being that you can have your team on property and you're going to broadcast the event live to the attendees. 
clearly today, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not just, you know, popping up a Zoom meeting and just, you know, having an event. It, it's Sometimes it can be complicated depending on the amount of people um, it involves. Uh, so they're offering that to broadcast the event live for you and they take care of all the technology using their meeting space. Uh, they also have a package that they have a limited amount of attendees, all, you know, respecting social distance, and then they can uh, record those sessions and then you can uh, give it to the attendees later. So I thought it was interesting that although they have this challenge now with their meeting space, they're thinking of ways outside of the box to kind of utilize those uh, those areas. Another thing that I see hotels do, and I think it was mentioned here before, is that there is a different type of traveler now that can work from anywhere. A lot of companies are not going back to offices at all. So people are going to um, use the, this opportunity to work and, and travel at the same time. If you cannot have two weeks vacation, you can go maybe to Palm Springs and work from the hotel there while you're enjoying your pool you know, late afternoon. So there is definitely that trend going on. And I think hotels kind of need to adapt to that traveler in the sense of is there room uh, inside the you know the room to for people to to work or is there a common space that you can make you know make it more comfortable for people to work from so i think hotels are adapting uh when it comes to that also cleaning certifications and it ties back to what we've been saying a lot people want to make sure that they're safe uh i think housekeeping is needed more than ever but it needs to be done differently it's not housekeeping knocking at your door seeing that you're not in the room and come and clean no there's going to be a lot more organization and there are technologies out there to help you do that but i think housekeeping is key um, also, I think hotels are trying to uh, are seeing an opportunity now with incentive groups because at the end of this, people will want to get together. So they're thinking about groups later on. Uh, so I think hotels that have you know the capability to cater to to that segment, I think they should definitely invest on it. Um, and the last thing that I see is that hotels are trying to do more with less. Um, as we're saying before, we have less staff on site and I think the, the roles are going to be a little bit more fluid. And I think I see maybe an opportunity for concierges to shine again, because if you have someone on site that can tell you about what's happening locally, what is um, worth you know, venturing out out there to see uh, in the city, I think they, it's going to be great to talk to someone on site. And I think there is a great opportunity for, for concierges to shine again. Uh, and deserve the attention that, uh, you know, they're due. So I think those are some of the things that I'm seeing out there. That's awesome. So to all concierges out there, please contact Bianca for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yes, hotels need you more than ever. <laughs> I completely agree with you, right? Bianca, I think that what COVID brought is, again, this concept of the cyborg, right? So through technology, we enabled the rescue something very vintage, very primitive, which is given service, being given hospitality through people, really, that now have better means and, and more productive channels and tools to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, but I completely agree with you, right? So the concierge will be vital for someone to arrive and be reassured that nothing is going on outside, that you can really get information. And, and it's about getting information and not getting intoxicated, right? Which is, it is a very, big, there's a very big difference uh, in today's, uh, uh, let's just say new normality, right? Yeah. And, 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 and again, they are not there to be taking orders, you know, to be sending you towels or a bottle of champagne. That's not the concierge service I'm talking about. I'm talking about really making connections with the guests. And uh, that's what I think is missing now uh, because of all the tasks that we have on our day to day. Technology will help. Um, so you can bring that human element again that we're craving. At least I am. I miss people. <laughs> Was one. Yeah. <laughs> We're all down in that list, I think. Yeah. So and technology have, uh, is not so expensive as in the past. Uh, you you know, uh, so it's it's very easy. It's approachable. You can approach it very easy as a hotelier. So it's not so expensive as in the past. So uh, maybe in the past this technology was a little bit more expensive mm -hmm. than expected. So uh, hoteliers were afraid and there was a picture that in order to have a chatbot or to have uh, uh, some uh, digital, uh, let's say, marketing campaigns would be uh, very expensive. Uh, no, it is not anymore. Uh, even uh, booking engine gives you tools for free in some cases that can help ho even mid-sized hotels, not only the big chains, uh, can take advantage of the technology. So this is something new also. It's not due to COVID, it was the last, 
let's say three years, I see that technology is not so expensive as, as it was in the past. So it's now the time to, to start over. It's not, uh, let's say, a sprint. It's, it's a marathon. You need, all hoteliers need to understand that uh, they need to make steps all the time ahead with technology, uh, uh, take it to the everyday, let's say, business, uh, in, and adapt all the features of uh, the technology can offer them. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Dio, right? And, and you know me, so I always use the term technology is not cheap or expensive. Right now it's accessible and there's a solution for everyone, right? So the beauty of SaaS specifically today is that it's very democratic. You have something for everyone. Mm -hmm. and you can actually pick and choose. So I think the only thing that COVID brought is that realization that you really need to embrace technology, right? Yeah. Whether it's A, B, or C, that doesn't matter, but it mm -hmm. will help you thrive and really ride this wave of post-COVID travel, which is not going to be the same as what we had before, right? So I think we all agree that travel will have a different way of being or it will have different components to it after what we've went through as, as a human species. Right, so I think hotels need to adapt, to embrace new technology, to implement it, right, to and and foster collaboration and really foster partnerships within the same vertical. So uh, with that, yeah, please. And Nuno, Nuno mentioned about market managers, support managers from the booking engine, from the chatbot, from uh, OTAs. So there is always somebody to support. So even uh, if you're not, let's say, uh, revenue oriented as a hotelier. Uh, there are, uh, th there is a support from the technology companies and they can uh, support you, teach you and somehow your team, yourself as a hotelier in order to, to, to gain the best and the most from uh, the features that uh, this technology offers. Now, if you, if you allow me in, in, in a minute. So one of the sessions that we will have in the afternoon is about Revenue Plus. Uh, which, which will be, which is a, a tool that we have in Expedia Partner Central. Which it's about maximizing your revenue, and I don't want to spoil too much because I have my colleague Chris that will present in one hour, so I don't want to say much. But it's free, and we keep asking the hotels to go there to ask us questions to try to understand, and it is for free. You don't have to pay. So how many revenue management tools do we have in the market that are for free? Well, I know one, right? So I will just say to the, our audience that if they can stay for the next session in an hour, it will be a nice, a nice to see. Well, that, that's the ultimate accessibility in terms of product, right, Nuno? So uh, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a very good use case. Uh, so for, for the sake of time, and first of all, I wanted to thank the three of you to being here today, to joining Travel Tech, sharing with us your expertise and, and your outlook in terms of the industry. Maybe what I would ask you is, starting with the ladies, if I may, <laughs> on, on International Women's Day, just to close with a two-minute, let's just say, very optimistic, very heartfelt message to all the hoteliers that joined us today, to the ones that couldn't, uh, really a parting message on, on what you would like to see them doing, how you can help them and, and yeah, put a silver lining to this amazing session we had today. Yeah, it hasn't been a, a, a an easy year for any of us. I think we saw so much tragedy, but I think we see the light at the end of the tunnel now, finally. Um, and I think there is definitely a rebound happening in the industry. I see more jobs being posted every day on LinkedIn. Um, so be ready, be prepared. I think it's going to be a quick turnaround for the industry, uh, but definitely try to come back better um, as a company, to the community, um, to the guests, to your staff, and technology, as, as uh, Theo was saying, there's technology for everything. So take a little bit of time to look into what's there and see what's uh, what's good for you and what could um, help your staff and your guests um, to make their journey, they, their stay better. Thank you very much for that, Bianca. Uh, Nuno? Okay. Um, 
the beginning I, I, I was telling about I was talking about dreaming right so we all want is to inspire travelers that who are still dreaming and engaging those who may be ready to travel with some content and messaging highlighting uh, rest relaxation rejuvenation so we have all those kind of things here that I believe that will be a good way to go on the informational part on the hygiene measures and pandemic as Bianca said, we have to be very careful about that, right? So keep the protocols and also be always up to date. And my last thing would go probably to all the above, right? All what we said before, it's really possible, but it will be even better if you can have all supported by flexibility and full of refunds to provide travelers with peace of mind when booking because travel never left travelers' minds. And this is something that we all know, as we are also travelers. And I think that travel is back. That that's the, that's the punchline there, right? So I love it, Theo. It's no more to say <laughs> after, <laughs> after all the things. So so he should be uh, <laughs> finalizing the whole session. But okay, so actually, uh, I, I would say that. Uh, Hotels must create their, let's say, rescue war team, understand the needs, invest in uh, the new digital future, and uh, build new strategies. And do not be afraid to try new things. So uh, it's a period you can try new things. So even they're unsuccessful in the beginning, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, if they try out, they will understand more and more the new trends. Uh, which is which are the visitors that are coming to the hotel, and if we are talking about direct bookings, uh, they will get in much uh, by investing in a good website, a good booking engine, and have a channel mix. This is what I wanted to say. Mm. Nuno had the better final, <laughs> final. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, right. So I'm I'm just thinking that. So first of all, thank you very much to the three of you for being here today. Uh, thanks Expedia, Assuit, and Bookal Online for allowing us to enjoy you, right? To all of our sponsors, the Travel Tech, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for trusting in us. I think the whole purpose is to share knowledge and experience and a silver lining as well. I, I, I agree that, first of all, we need to recover um, trust. We, we really need to work as an ecosystem, as a vertical, as an industry. With the travelers to regain trust so they feel that travel never left and we come out actually stronger from this right so uh i think history has already proven that we might have incidences impacting travel but we always come out stronger so this is this is but another iteration in that in that piece of uh history right we, we're gonna go through this and we are gonna come stronger for sure so to everyone on the call thank you very much Again, apologizes for the technical inconveniences. I hope you enjoyed it uh, on here and on the YouTube channel. And I think it, we're gonna call it a day. There's the afternoon sessions for the pitches. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a very nice rest of the day, wherever you are. Right. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.